Hi, Teacher Liz here. Pag-usapan natin ng tungkol sa formation of ions. Ang lesson na to ay alinsunod sa ating most essential learning competency and that is to explain how ions are formed. Meron tayong tatlong objectives. Una, define valence electrons. Pangalawa, explain the formation of positive and negative ions. At pangatlo, we classify which elements have a tendency to form cations and anions. Sa kasalukuyan, meron tayong 118 elements sa periodic table. And with these 118 elements, pwede tayong makabuo ng libu-libong compounds. Ano nga ba ang compounds? Compounds are formed when two or more atoms of different elements combine. Pero paano nga ba nagkocombine ng iba't ibang elements? Bakit nga ba sila kailangan magcombine? And what glues them together? Malalaman natin yan sa ating leksyon ngayong araw. Let's consider our first question, what are valence electrons? Para makabuo tayo ng compounds, we need to consider the electrons in the outermost energy level. Ang tawag dito ay valence electrons. At since these valence electrons are in the excited state, iisa lang ang goal ng atom na ito. It wants to become stable by completing the arrangement of 8 electrons sa kanyang outermost shell. This is known as the octet rule. Example ng elements na naka-achieve na ng octet rule ay mga elements sa group 18 or 8A of the periodic table. Tinatawag din silang noble gases. Lahat sila ay may kumpletong bilang ng 8 na electrons sa outermost energy level nila. Maliban nga lang kay helium na may dalawang valence electrons pero kabilang pa rin sa grupo dahil dalawang electrons lang naman ang requirements sa first energy level. Sila ay tinatawag na noble dahil sila ay least reactive o halos hindi nakikihalubilo o nagre-react sa iba pang elements para makapag-form ng compounds kasi nga stable na sila. At lahat ng natirang elements gustong gumaya sa stable electron configuration ng noble gases para maging stable. Of course, di ba? Everyone wants to be noble or stable. Ika nga. So, paano ba natin malalaman ang valence electrons ng mga elements real quick? Meron tayong groups from 1 to 18. At ang group number ng elements ay siyang numero rin ng kanilang valence electrons. Halimbawa, ang mga elements sa group 1 merong valence electrons na isa. Ang mga elements naman na nasa group 2 merong valence electrons na dalawa. And so on and so forth. Para i-represent ang valence electrons ng elements, gagamit tayo ng diagram called electron dot structures. Ang electron dot structures, aka Lewis structure, is a type of diagram used to keep track of the valence electrons. Sa electron dot structure, isinusulat natin ang element symbol at pinapalibutan natin ito ng dots na siyang nag-represent ng valence electrons. Okay, let's have a quick check. Using the periodic table, let's complete the table below. So, meron tayong limang element at aalamin natin kung ano ang group number nila valence electrons at ang electron dot structure. For magnesium, ito ay nasa group 2 or 2A. Ibig sabihin, ang kanyang valence electrons ay dalawa. At ano kaya ang magiging itsura ng electron dot structure? Let's see. Okay, so meron tayong element symbol na Mg at dalawang valence electrons represented by the dots. Okay, sagutan natin ang iba pang mga elements within 5 minutes. I-pause muna ang video na to para sagutan. Okay, sagutan na natin. So, for potassium, group number is 1A, kaya ang valence electron nito ay isa, at ang kanyang electron dot structure ay may isang dot. For phosphorus, ang group number nito ay 5 or 5A, so, ang valence electrons niyang 5 at ang itsura ng kanyang electron dot structure ay ganyan. Next is for sulfur. Sulfur is in group number 6. Valence electrons ay 6 din at ang kanyang electron dot structure is like this. For argon naman, argon is in group 8. 
which means meron siyang 8 valence electrons at ang kanyang electron dot structure is shown in the figure. So let's go to our second question. How are ions formed? So alam na natin ano ang valence electrons at para makabuo tayo ng compounds, these valence electrons may be given up or taken by atoms. Sa process na to, nakakabuo tayo ng tinatawag nating ions. Consider a sodium atom. The element sodium has an atomic number 11 at ibig sabihin meron siyang 11 protons sa kanyang nucleus at 11 electrons around the nucleus. This makes the sodium atom neutral or zero net charge dahil balance ang kanyang protons and electrons. Since nasa group 1 siya, ibig sabihin iisa ang kanyang valence electrons sa outermost energy level. At sa kagustuhan niyang maging stable, itong si sodium atom, it is ready to give up one electron so that it has a complete eight electrons in the outermost shell. Just like the noble gas neon. Note pero na kahit pareho sila ng electron configuration, magkaiba pa rin ng neon sa sodium. Bakit? Dahil sa number of protons. Si sodium ion is still sodium with a positive charge because it now has less electrons than its protons. Samantalang si neon ay zero ang kanyang net charge dahil pareho ang number ng protons and electrons. But since pareho nga sila ng electron configuration, the sodium ion and the neon atom are called isoelectronic species. And these are atoms or ions that have the same electronic configurations. So si sodium, dahil nawalan siya ng isang electron, becomes a positive ion or cation. So we represent sodium ion as Na positive. Now let's consider the fluorine atom. Since nasa group 7 siya, ibig sabihin 7 ang kanyang valence electrons. At sa kagustuhan niyang maging stable, it wants to gain 1 electron so that it has a complete set of 8 electrons in the outermost shell. Fluorine atom now gains a negative charge dahil mas marami na ang electrons kesa sa protons. So fluorine now becomes an anion or negatively charged particles. Kapag ang atom naging anion, dinudugtungan ito ng ayod sa dulo. Kaya ang fluorine atom na nag-receive ng electron ay magiging fluorine ion or fluoride. So once again, we have two types of ions. One is cation which are positively charged ions at ito ay merong at ito ay merong more protons than electrons. Samantalang ang anion naman ay negatively charged at mas marami ang kanyang electrons kesa sa protons. Now we go to our final question. Which elements tend to form cations and anions? Kung babalikan natin ng ating periodic table, meron tayong iba't ibang grupo ng elements. Meron tayong metals, which are in yellow, metalloids, in violet, and non-metals, which are in green. Generally, Metals tend to form cations because they tend to lose electrons very easily. Metals have low ionization energy or the energy needed to remove an electron from a neutral atom. Ibig sabihin, hindi nila kailangan ng masyado malaking energy para ma-remove yung electron from the outermost energy level. Anong elements naman kaya ang may tendency na maging anions? In general, non-metals easily gain electrons to attain stability because they have high electronegativity or the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself. Hydrogen, although very reactive, may gain or lose electrons in the process, which means it can act as a positive or negative ion. So let's have a final quick check. Using the periodic table, complete the table below. Meron tayong limang elements at aalamin natin kung ito ba ay metal or non-metal. At ano ang tendency ng atoms? Is it to lose electrons or gain electrons? And finally, does it become a cation or an ion? Sagutan natin ang unang item, calcium. It's a metal, so it has a tendency to lose electrons and become 
cation. Okay, bibigyan ko kayo ng 5 minutes para sagutan ang remaining items. I-pause mo ng video na to para sagutan. Okay, so sagutan na natin. For chlorine, it is a non-metal and it has the tendency to gain electrons and becomes an ion. Ganun din sa ating nitrogen. And for the lithium, it is a non-metal so it, it has a tendency to lose electrons and become a cation. Finally, for oxygen, it is a non-metal and it has a tendency to gain electrons and become an anion. Okay, let's wrap things up. Up next, the formation of ionic, covalent, and metallic bonds. See you po sa ating next video. Thank you and paalang!